Here's something to think about. At least half the oxygen that we breathe comes from tiny organisms that live in the ocean. These microscopic marine phytoplankton produce oxygen just like land plants. But phytoplankton are not plants. They're protists, single-celled organisms. They're so small that thousands of them can snuggle together in a single drop of water. To study phytoplankton, scientists can use microscopes up close or satellites far above. From space, you and I would see Earth like this. But some satellites see Earth like this, a dance of rainbow colors. In this case, the colors represent the concentration of phytoplankton in the ocean. Red is high concentration, blue is low. To grow and reproduce, phytoplankton depend on nutrients in the water of proper temperature and just the right light conditions. Coastal areas are extremely rich in nutrients that have washed off the land, into the rivers, and down to the sea. Areas of open ocean have lower concentrations of phytoplankton because fewer nutrients can be found there. The mouth of the Mississippi River is a perfect example of how nutrient runoff creates phytoplankton blooms. 41% of the United States drains into the Mississippi River, then out into the Gulf of Mexico. That's a total of 3.2 million square kilometers of land, or about 600 million football fields. About 12 million people live in urban areas that border the Mississippi. All those folks constantly discharge treated sewage into the rivers. However, the majority of the land in the Mississippi's watershed is farmland. Each spring, as farmers fertilize their lands, preparing for crop season, rain washes fertilizer off the land and ultimately down into the ocean. All the urban and farm discharges include nutrients, such as nitrogen and phosphorus, that are very important for the growth of phytoplankton. Incredibly, about 1.7 million tons of these nutrients are dumped into the Gulf of Mexico every year. Once the Gulf receives this huge influx of yummy nourishment, massive phytoplankton blooms occur. Now, these blooms often result in an area called the dead zone. It's actually a place where the concentration of oxygen has dropped so low that few organisms can survive there. But how does this make sense? If phytoplankton blooms produce oxygen, then why does a dead zone occur? For animals such as microscopic zooplankton and fish, phytoplankton blooms are like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Small animals eat the phytoplankton and, in turn, are eaten by bigger fish. All along, these animals are releasing waste, which falls to the bottom of the gulf. There, bacteria are lurking, waiting to decompose the waste. In the process, they use up the oxygen, creating hypoxic conditions. The different densities of fresh water from the Mississippi and salt water from the gulf create barriers that prevent mixing between the surface and the deep waters. Soon, there's not enough oxygen for other organisms to use. The dead zone has come. But it doesn't stay dead. The cycle of seasons restores the waters. As summer turns to fall, winds make waves, which stir up the water, allowing the layers to mix and replenishing the oxygen. Eventually, the gulf and its fish populations return to normal.